Okay, so guys, let's do um, some examples of limits at infinity. Okay, I'm going to start with some simple ones, but uh, which are very important in understanding um, the other examples that we'll be doing. Um, so let's take uh, the limit as x approaches infinity of, let's say, x, for example, right? This is just linear. And so as x becomes larger and larger in the positive direction, say x is 1, x is 2, x is 3, while when x is 1, this would be positive, it's 1. When x is 2, this would be 2. When it's 3, this is 3. As x goes to infinity, this is also getting to infinity. It's, get, it's becoming larger and larger, right? If x, x is approaching to infinity, means that x is getting larger and larger. Our function f of x is just x. If this is 1, x is 1. If this is 2, x is 2. If this is 1,000, if the x is approaching 1,000, this is also approaching 1,000, right? So as x approaches, approaches positive infinity, this guy approaches positive infinity as well. So this goes to infinity, right? I mean, if you plot, if you plot the, uh, the graph of y is equal to x, right? The function y plus x is just this line, right? It's a straight line. As x is getting larger, this, this is getting like a linear, it's getting bigger and bigger in the positive direction, right? In the same way, this is not in the part of this, but the limit as x approaches negative infinity of x, okay? As x is becoming larger in the negative direction, this is becoming bigger in the negative direction as well. You see that? So if you put negative into, um, as x is negative one, the function will be negative one. Negative, 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 negative. As this is getting bigger in the negative direction, this is also getting larger in the negative direction. All right, x is going this way, this guy is going to negative direction. So this is negative infinity. All right, so that is, uh, that is very important to uh, keep note of. If this was x squared, right? If this was x squared, then of course, you see straight away, right? The limit as x approaches negative infinity or positive infinity of x squared. Well, this is still approaching infinity, right? It will be positive infinity. The limit as x approaches negative infinity of x squared. Because this is squared, if you put a negative number, no matter how large, it will be positive, right? Positive by getting larger. So this will still be positive infinity. Unlike here, where it will be negative, right? Which makes sense, right? Because the function x squared is this. So as x is getting larger in the positive direction, the function is getting larger in the positive. As x is getting larger in the negative, x, the function is also getting bigger in the positive direction. So in either case, it's positive and positive. All right? Okay, good. So these are some um, basic examples that, that should help you to understand the concept. Good. So number one is easy. The limit as x approaches infinity of x is just infinity. Number two, the limit as x approaches negative infinity of pi with 3 all over x squared. We can use the laws of limits. This is just a constant, so we can pull it out, right? Pi with 3 is just a constant. The pi is just there to scale you, nothing, nothing in it. Limit x approaches negative infinity, 1 over x squared. All right? Now, we can do this straight away, or you can break it down into two forms, right? And use the product uh, law or rule, pi with 3. This is the same as, note that 1 over x squared is the same as 1 over x times 1 over x, right? So this, I can find this as limit as x approaches negative infinity of 1 over x times the limit as x approaches negative infinity of 1 over x. This is pi to 3, which is a constant. The limit as x approaches negative infinity of 1 over x, we found this already is 0. And we found this is also 0. This time, 0 times 0 is equal to 0. All 
all right? Or you could have done the street away from here. As x is getting larger, whether positive or negative, this is also getting larger, right? And so you have one over something that is very large and it's positive, and so this will be going to zero. Okay, good. So these are our trivial examples. Uh, number three is where we start to learn uh, something new about how we find the limit at infinity for rational functions. All right. In three, you have limits as x approaches infinity of five x squared, eight x minus three, all over three x squared plus two. Okay, whenever you have rational functions and you want to find the limits at infinity, what you do is you divide, you divide the numerator and the denominator by the factor, the x here, with the highest coefficient, right? Divide the numerator and the denominator by it. So the denominator, the highest, um, the x to the highest power here is x squared, right? This is x squared. So you divide each time in the denominator by x squared and do the same for the numerator. And then you can find the limit of the um, resulting expression. So this is limit as x approaches infinity. So I'm going to take 5 x squared and I'll divide it by x squared because x squared here is the highest um, down here, right? It's the x with the highest power. I do the same here. I have x. 8x over x squared minus 3 over x squared. Do the same for down here. I have 3x squared over x squared. I have 2 over x squared. Okay? Then this is equal to the limit as x approaches infinity of, note that this x will cancel out this x. So up here it has a 5. This x will cancel one of this, so we have 8 over x, and then minus 3 over x squared. 3 over x squared, all over, down here, this x squared cancels this x squared, so I have 3 plus 2 over x squared. Once you've done this, then you can find the limit of the numerator and then the denominator, okay? So notice that this is a constant, so the limit as x approaches infinity of 5 is still 5 plus the limit as x approaches infinity of 8 over x. This is getting bigger and bigger. This is a constant. So this goes to 0 and that also goes to 0. So you have 0 and then 0. Okay? This is a constant and so this remains as a constant plus the limit as x goes to infinity of this is 0. 2 over something that is getting bigger and bigger. That is 0. So in the end, the limit will be equal to 5 over 3. Okay? 5 over 3. So that's the limit of this. So you use this technique a lot when you, when you have rational functions of this form. We're going to do the same thing for uh, the fourth one. Okay? Same technique. So in the fourth one, we have we have um, limits. The limit as x approaches negative infinity of eleven x plus two all over two x cubed minus one. So in the denominator, x cubed is the term with the highest power, right? x to the power 3. So we do the same division. So we have a limit as x approaches negative infinity of 11 x over x cubed plus 2 over x cubed all over 2 x cubed over x cubed minus 1 over x cubed. Right? So this is equal to the limit as x approaches negative infinity Notice that this will cancel one of this. So here now we have 2, right? So 11 over x squared plus 2 over x cubed. All over. This cubed cancels x cubed. I have 2 here minus 1 over x cubed. Okay. 
So now, if you take the limit as x approaches negative infinity of this, x is coming bigger and bigger. So you have 11 over that, that goes to 0. This also goes to 0. This is 2. This term has the limit as x goes to infinity, this guy goes to 0 as well. So you have 0, 0 over 2, which is equal to 0. And so the limit as x approaches infinity, negative infinity of this guy is equal to 0. Okay? So in the next session, I'll write a few more examples and then we'll do, we'll do some more examples on this.